Today we're checking out the Myers pickup, which is something I've been using since about February. It comes in a number of different configurations and hopefully by the end of this video I've made it clear what all the different versions are and what they can be used for different instruments and such. In this video I'm going to be demonstrating it across all the different instruments that I play and that I've used it for. I've been on big stages, in small bars, and in musical pits uh, and it's worked well each and every time. So um, as always the timestamps are in the description if you feel like skipping around. Let's get into it. The Myers pickup is simply an omnidirectional microphone on a gooseneck and a microphone preamp here with a single volume control. They call it a pickup because it puts a, a similar type of signal out as a pickup would, that being unbalanced microphone level high impedance. So what does that mean? Simply it means that you can use it with effects pedals. Of course you can go direct with this, you might find you need a little bit of EQ depending on the instrument and the placement of the microphone that you've chosen, uh, but if you want to use this with a larger rig, that's kind of what it's meant to do. Add in a little bit of reverb, delay, maybe some compression if you like that. The preamp is pretty much the same across all the different models aside from the blend version which lets you blend in the signal from a pickup in addition to the microphone so that would be useful. Uh, but aside from that the pickup here is the same across everything. So we have a couple different versions you can get. You can get the six inch gooseneck which is the one that I use the most. They also have a shorter three inch version and everything comes with a windscreen that you can put on or take off. That helps if you're playing outdoors for sure. Uh, it sounds a little bit better if you take it off so I would only put it on when you need it. As you heard in the beginning of the video, you can also get it split to two different microphones here. So this is going to be great for larger sources. I used it on my acoustic guitar and I was able to get the microphones further from the strings which yields a slightly more authentic sound in my opinion. Uh, this would also be great for like accordion or cello. Those shorter goosenecks are meant for when you're mounting the preamp directly on the instrument. Of course everything is non-permanent, there's no installation required, it's just completely removable. Um, if you wanted to keep the preamp off the instrument for whatever reason, you can keep it in, you know, on your belt buckle or just sitting on the chair behind you, which is what I've been doing for a lot of this video. Um, you can use these larger cables. So this is a six inch gooseneck that you would attach with a clip here or a number of different ways. Uh, and then just an extension cable here that finally connects to the preamp. The Myers pickup is able to attach to your instrument in a number of different ways depending on the package that you select. I have what they refer to as the Elite Bundle, so this is one preamp, a number of different gooseneck microphones which you just saw, and then all the different attachment methods that they offer. Uh, and I got that because I use this with a bunch of different instruments. So that makes sense. Obviously if you're using it with only one instrument, find the one that's going to work and it's going to cost a lot less for you. The one way you saw was this little suction cup that comes in two different sizes actually. Uh, and I found that that worked really well stuck to the top of the instrument Then you have the volume control right there. I did try it on the front and it didn't seem to hold there too well, gravity was working against it and also the cable. But if you have it sitting on top and you're sitting down not moving much that's going to work fine. It also comes with a little clip that you can use as you're going to see in a second to attach it to maybe the, uh, the rings on a banjo or actually the top of the wood in the sound hole. Something else that I had never been able to do is, you know, make use of the awesome acoustic tone of this arch top. This is a floating pickup, so it's literally an acoustic guitar. Nothing's touching the top. It just happens to be amplified with a magnetic pickup. Well, if I wanted to use the actual acoustic sound of the instrument now, I could just clip it onto the pickguard here. And I could point it maybe down into the sound hole, or if there's a place where my hand's not going to hit it, maybe all the way up here. <laughs> You could also get this large clip which they advertise as being used for cello or bass. You could clip it onto the tailpiece or the bridge if you wanted a slightly different placement. Uh, it also has a self-adhesive pad so you could stick it onto the instrument permanently, probably not on the varnish, uh, but maybe some other part or I'm sure this would be harmless on a guitar, a hard guitar finish. Uh, you could also stick this to the preamp itself and then clip this to your belt. From the preamp you would run one of their longer microphone cables 
and just wired it up that way. Now, just as an aside here, something that might be useful to you. Um, the first time I saw the preamp, it was being used by the cellist in my wife's string quartet and it sounded great on cello, it really does. Um, she was actually using Velcro to attach the back of it and then she did another piece of Velcro on the tailpiece of her instrument. You couldn't even really see it because it was black. Um, so that is just a very easy way just to stick it on when you need it, tear it off when you don't. In the case that you're gonna use one of the mics with the extension cable, uh, there's also a bunch of different clips so you can use these if you find them if you go on the website, you can see them being used to attach it to a banjo. Uh, there's also the clip designed here to actually hold the very end where it becomes a gooseneck. Uh, and this clip is what I've been using to attach at the sound hole for my guitars. Next up, we're going to listen to the Myers pickup compared to a traditional piezo pickup. A piezo pickup is great for amplifying a source and getting it loud and not having to worry about feedback so much. The sound can be pretty brittle and not reflective of what the instrument actually sounds like, but it does cut through and sometimes that's just what you need. A microphone like the Myers pickup is going to give you a much more authentic sound. It's going to sound way better actually like the instrument. However, you could run into the issue of feedback if you're working in a loud environment. The pickup on my violin is a Fishman V200, which is a quarter inch that runs to a single piezo element in the bridge here, uh, similar to the Myers pickup in price for sure, uh, and also in practicality and being something that is a non-permanent installation. <laughs> On my Martin, we've got the k, k Pure Mini, which is a piezo type pickup as well. Slightly different in that it just has three discs here that are glued to the underside of the bridge, goes straight to the output jack. It's a very low output, high impedance pickup, but it doesn't affect the resonance of the instrument and that's why I like it. On my classical guitar, we've got a traditional undersaddle piezo, which is what most people are probably used to hearing. It's a thin piezo element that sits in between the saddle uh, and the rest of the bridge. So obviously this affects the sound of the instrument. It's disconnecting that very essential point there. Um, it can sound really tinny. It is probably my least favorite form of a piezo pickup, but it's what's out there in most guitars. Up next, we're comparing the Myers pickup to the trusty Shure SM57, which in most cases, if you're miking an instrument in a live situation in a loud environment, this is the mic that you're gonna use. It's great at rejecting off-axis sound, so if you're pointing it at a violin, everything behind it is getting rejected pretty well. It's just reliable, it's cheap, and this is what's practical. <laughs>
one thing you should definitely play around with is mic placement. So at the beginning of the video, we heard on my acoustic guitar, the goosenecks coming over the top and pointing down at the strings. That sounds great because the mic is further away from the strings. Sometimes that's not always practical. Sometimes you want to get the microphone as close as possible to help with feedback and extra outside noise. So inside the guitar, it tends to sound a little bit boxy in my opinion, although you can clean that up with EQ. I haven't done that at all in this video. You're just hearing everything direct. The Myers pickup uses two CR1220 three volt batteries. So you're gonna wanna have a few of those on hand. Simply, you just unscrew those two Phillips head screws you see on the top, uh, and it's pretty easy to replace, I've done it. So there it is, the Myers pickup. I'd love to know your thoughts on how it compared with the 57 and also to the different piezo pickup options I had. You can check it out at the link in the description. I also wanted to throw a little bit of feedback out there. I have used it with mandolin. Right now the mandolin is in the shop getting a permanent pickup installation. I do plan on using the microphone when I can. It sounds a lot better than a pickup ever will in my opinion. Um, but sometimes you just need a piezo pickup. So I've personally used it with the mandolin. It sounds great. There's a lot of videos you can find around on YouTube if you're wondering that specifically. Uh, if not, hopefully I've answered all your questions. If you have any others, you can leave them in the comments. I'm usually pretty good at getting back to people. Thanks for checking out the video. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.